How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the mass shooting, which was most likely a terror attack. Now it's 95 percent most likely a terror attack that happened on the Naval Air Base in Pensacola, Florida. Now, there's a lot to get through, a whole lot I need to unpack here. So let's start from the very beginning. Now, there was a disturbance on base. This crazed gunman, not quite sure why he did what he did. We'll get to that a little bit later as far as any speculation. He goes around shooting people. At least three people are dead. Many others are injured. The local police respond to the incident. They engage in a gunfight. Two of the officers get shot. One, I think, was in the arm. The other one was in the leg. They're both going to be okay. One guy's in surgery, guy or girl, whatever it is. They're going to be just fine. The shooter, fortunately for all of us, is dead. And information about him was kind of slow to come out but now we have a pretty good picture of what's going on when i first saw the story there was nothing about who this guy was it was just mass shooting and at this particular point in time quite frankly i've kind of become immune to these there was another mass shooting at a navy base this time it was over in pearl harbor not too far away time wise from the anniversary of the Pearl Harbor attack 77 years ago tomorrow, which would be December the 7th, 2019. Different story, so I digress. The point is that I did not really report on that or look into it too much because I've seen plenty of these mass shootings and it's like, okay, you, you can't always report on these because you never stop reporting on mass shootings. But this one took a crazy turn when I found out that this individual was a Saudi military official. Now, I was totally confused when I first saw it. I'm like, okay, how do you go from we don't know who he is to the person is an aviation student to they are a Saudi military official, officer, or whatever the case may be. They're part of the Saudi military. I saw that and I thought that they were a Saudi national or they were born in Saudi Arabia and then they came to the U.S. as an immigrant became naturalized or whatever and then joined the military. No, no, no. You're talking about a member of the Saudi military being trained in the USA. Now, does that sound familiar? A Saudi being trained in aviation, no less, in the US, who then goes out and commits a terror attack? Does that sound familiar? That's 9-11 right there all day. So of course, people are gonna say, 9-11 all over again, have we learned our lesson? Shout out to Matt Gates. He was the one that broke the news about the guy being a Saudi military official officer whatever the case he said that we bring many of them over here to train them because they're our allies to help us fight overseas but at a certain point we gotta just reevaluate what's going on you know they're talking about you gotta vet people this that and the third i mean we might need to just end this program at least for the foreseeable future because we don't want to keep importing terrorists that come and attack us i mean i've not heard about that from any other country uh, I mean, like if we get a person that comes from Nigeria or China or Europe or somewhere like that, I don't hear about these stories of, oh, they came to the military base, they were trying to learn how to fly, and then they go out and commit a terror attack. Okay. Now, speculation. Why did he do what he did? I mean, I doubt that it was some kind of, uh, like, I, I don't know what else it could have been other than a terror attack. You're shooting that. Random people, indiscriminately, the police come, put the gun down, surrender, is that, and the third, you're just getting into a shootout. And you're a military trained person, so of course you're gonna understand how to shoot and how to conceal yourself and take a minimal amount of damage, which is why he was able to kill three people, injure many others, and shoot two police officers who were armed and were shooting back at him. Now, of course, you got your guys like uh, Pocahontas and many others talking about, well, you can't be safe anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be at a church, a movie theater, a military base. It doesn't really matter. There's that and a third. It's like, well, come on. I mean, according to guys like that and many others who purport themselves to be big proponents of gun control, only the police and the military should have guns. So even if you have total gun control, that would have been the guy right there that has a gun. So obviously some people are not there mentally. Whatever tool they have to use to attack somebody will be what they do. 
And you want to talk about terrorism, a lot of these guys don't use guns, all right? They hijacked the plane with like some plastic knives or something and crashed the plane into a building. Now, I don't want to go down that whole rabbit hole of what happened and how did it happen and building seven is that and the third. So for now, I digress. My whole point is that people don't need guns to commit terror attacks. They got suicide vests with bombs on it. You got vehicles that can just drive, accelerate, pedal to the metal and hit people. You know, there's all kinds of ways you can commit a terror attack that do not involve a gun. Simple. And if you are a military trained person, you'd be better able to commit these attacks if you don't have the tool necessary to be able to do so. As far as a gun is concerned, you can use other methods to commit your attacks. As I close, I want to say this. Rest in peace to those that passed away. And hopefully everyone who was injured will be able to recover fully and not succumb to their injuries. And hopefully they won't be permanently injured if and when they do survive. But at a certain point, we got to look at what's going on right now with our policy of bringing foreign people into our country to train them with weapons, to be in the military or whatever the case may be. Yes, Saudi Arabia are our allies. Don't get it twisted. Yes, they are. People want to bring up people like Jamal Khashoggi. It's like, look, Khashoggi was not a U.S. citizen. They'll say, oh, he was based in the U.S. He was not a U.S. citizen. As far as I know, he was a Saudi and or possibly Turkish citizen. Definitely a citizen of Saudi Arabia, not of the U.S. So if the prince and some of his homeboys decided to enact some justice on this guy for pushing sedition, according to them in their eyes, then I can't really judge them. That's their laws. There's a lot of laws over there that I don't think make any sense. I don't know about Saudi, but some of these other Middle Eastern stands, whatever you want to call them, if you are a rape victim as a woman, you get punished. You get a thousand lashes. You can't go outside without your hoodie on. It could be a thousand degrees. doesn't matter. You still got to adhere to certain rules and principles and guidelines in their country. And that's okay. I don't like their rules and guidelines. Therefore, I'm going to stay over here in the good old U.S. of A. where it's free. Some may say we may be a little bit too free, allowing every time they can harry a terrorist into our nation. Hopefully that perception of us ends pretty soon here. The vet has got to be on 1000. And I would suggest to just end this whole program of importing foreign people from Saudi Arabia and whatnot to train them to fight with us overseas because you got too many issues. This ain't the first time this has happened. This is, you know, we're seeing a pattern. We've got to nip this whole thing in the bud before it gets out of control. You don't want to see uh, people coming to the country, being trained to fight, engaging in terrorism and victimizing U.S. citizens. Now, how are we going to respond to the Saudis? Well, only time's going to tell. How is the prince gonna react how is their government gonna react we gotta have a talk it's gonna be somebody like pompeo maybe even trump himself to go to saudi or they come here and we talk about this because this can't go on suspend the program talk to them and figure out a way to solve this nip it in the boat before it grows stronger people overseas the isis members they may look at this and just be overjoyed with glee we cannot have that be the case but i think i'll leave that right there for now and what say you do you think that we should stop this whole program of importing people from saudi arabia and other countries where we know there's going to be some terrorism over here to be trained in the military if that's your viewpoint let me know why in the comments below or is it an isolated incident it's not really a big deal as far as the whole program is concerned it's hard for me to tell. I don't know how many individuals come from Saudi and other countries to the U.S. to be trained in the military. If you know that number, let me know in the comments below. But I want to see a percentage of people that have come over here to get trained that have engaged in some kind of terror attack, some kind of, you know, unlawful behavior in general that does not necessarily make the news, you know, getting in a drunken bar fights, beating up girlfriends. Like, I want to know the whole thing. Give me a full profile of those that come from Saudi and other countries that come to the U.S. to train militarily to go back to their countries and engage in fighting with their military. Find me that information. That's what I want to see. So I'll be able to make a decision as far as, well, maybe we should suspend the program. Maybe we shouldn't. But whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.